Hi there, welcome back to IndyCar Special Christmas Message Edition from me, Gordon Ross, in the IndyCar. Now that's me back to work after the Christmas period is over. I hope you've all had a really peaceful, happy uh, family time. I had a great Christmas, thanks to all my relatives and friends, so uh, I hope you had something similar. And of course we've still got Hogmanay to look forward to. But in the midst of all of this, there is suffering, and I'm talking about the suffering of all the people in Scotland who had to suffer through 55 minutes of a grovelling homage to, well, you know who, not my spaniel, the, um, the illegal king of Scots. Personally, I don't know anybody in Scotland who tunes in to the Christmas message by the monarch at all, even when it was the Queen. But uh, for Prince Charles, the BBC's homage to him was lengthy and grovelling as usual, and frankly, I couldn't be bothered with it. So you're not going to get that sort of thing from IndyCar, thankfully, today. So I thought I'd bring you up to date on what's in the news today. And probably the most weird story I've seen today in any news feed is the story that um, scientists in England have managed to devise a way of distilling jet fuel from human sewage. And you might think, well, hmm... That's a great idea because there's an awful lot of human sewage flowing into the rivers and watercourses in England, particularly at the moment, and they could do with a way of doing something about that. Anyway, it seems that poo, as it's normally known by the sort of more genteel of us, is an abundant source of, um, well, fuel. It can be distilled into something which is akin to kerosene. In fact, it's so akin to kerosene, it's only about 1% different. And the major difference, actually, between poo-powered airplane fuel and the conventional stuff is that the poo-powered stuff doesn't have any carbon in it, so it doesn't spew out carbon dioxide, at least nothing like the same extent as normal jet fuel. Unfortunately, the process at the moment is at just the laboratory stage, but the scientists themselves seem overjoyed at the idea that they found an abundant source of potentially new green fuel for jets. The unfortunate thing is that their best estimate at the moment is as far as getting the um, the jet fuel down to an acceptable level, given the very mild form of controls that the British state imposes on such things at the moment in the interest of becoming carbon neutral, is they only have to supply 10% of jet fuel as non-carbon or carbon neutral. And this stuff is apparently carbon neutral. But unfortunately, even with all the sewage available to the British state, which is obviously currently being pumped into the nation's rivers down there, there is only about 5% of the available, um, shall we say, jet fuel can be got from that source. So although it might be a distant prospect, the idea of basically poo-powered British airplanes is not so daft as it might sound. Our daft stories are not confined just simply to poo. And speaking of poo brings me back to the Labour Party for some reason. I'm not sure how I segued into that one. But the Labour Party's plans for offshoring, as they say, the immigration difficulties of England particularly, have been mocked as being completely immoral. The idea that you can somehow create an island somewhere in the UK, which is the place where all illegal and, um, so we say, unconventional migrants end up seems a bit crazy at the best of times, but the idea of making people go and live on some remote island, and you know it's probably going to be in Scotland, don't you? Whilst their uh, claims for asylum are being processed, simply moves the problem from England to some small Scottish island. And is that actually moral? I mean, the Australians did this with their immigration policy, where they basically offshored the problem to some island, um, I believe it was in the Indian Ocean somewhere, or down that way, but certainly off the north coast of Australia, but not on Australian soil, in an effort to shift the problem elsewhere, and that's all that the Labour Party's plans would do. They're almost as bad as what the Tories are planning to do, but just in a different way. However, in Scotland, we've noticed that uh, net migration in Scotland has actually increased, which is good for Scotland because we lack the birth rate to maintain our population. And we actually rely on people coming in from elsewhere to help basically provide enough people to work in the economy, especially those who are working age and prepared. 
to work hard for, shall we say, less than optimum wages, especially uh, in the hotel sector and the services industries and the retail industry, which don't pay brilliant wages and have difficulty recruiting from, shall we say, the more uh, local labour market. However, that's you know just about all there is to the news these days, except for one thing, and I bring you back to the poo issue again and segue to the BBC this time. And it's been revealed today that BBC Scotland has had the highest number of news corrections and apologies of any part of the BBC network. And I'm talking about more complaints, more corrections, more apologies than any other part of the network combined. So the entire BBC network outside of Scotland doesn't get as many complaints and corrections and apologies as Scotland's BBC does. And I think that's an indication of just how bad BBC Scotland has become and just how much it is perceived as some kind of British propaganda organ located on the Clyde um, in Pacific Key. And I, I'm pretty sure that when it comes to Hogman A, unless Jackie Bird has been preserved in aspic somewhere, they're going to have to wheel out some new bird to present their Hogmanay show with all the kilts and the hay bales and the ho hooking and chooking that goes along with the BBC's version of Hogmanay. When in actual fact we know that Hogmanay is just simply about first footing your family and friends, not wearing kilts particularly, yes, drinking a fair amount, but not all of that nonsense with the shortbread tin sort of bagpipes and you know, Highland dancing and things like that. that that's the kind of hootenanny stuff that the English people think that Hogmanay is all about, but we know differently. Anyway, that's about it from the IndyCar Christmas special today, but I just thought it was funny um, to mention poo-powered airplanes and the ridiculous ideas of the Labour Party for offshoring their migration difficulties in England to somewhere up here. And at the same time, the BBC being swamped with complaints and corrections here in Scotland, whereas elsewhere, they have less to worry about. But anyway, that's it from me today. I hope you all have a very fun New Year, or Hogmanay, as we tend to call it up here. And that you go first footing and enjoy Hogmanay for what it's really about, which is basically having a lot of fun, getting a bit plastered, and having a raging hangover the next day, which is, of course, the tradition here. Anyway, that's it from me today. I hope you will tune in again and um, I'll produce some new content later in the week. It'll be interesting to see if anything fun happens over the next few days. But right at the moment, there's a dearth of good news. So I thought a little bit of light relief was uh, necessary today. I thought you might get a little kick out of the idea of English aeroplanes being powered by raw sewage. But there you go. It's just stranger than fiction. You couldn't make it up, could you? Anyway, that's it from IndyCar. Keep the faith, and I'll see you later in the week. Have a happy new year, everyone, and bye for now.